Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How are you doing? Today, right now, I just want to talk to you about a very important topic that I get some questions about sometimes. Um, and it's about scope. So what is a scope and why why do why does it exist? It's, it's really tough to grasp sometimes and easy at the same time, I'd say. A scope is, is very much just a construct that is kind of logical it's very logical actually and I is a good way to show it is, is to draw it and I try to think in my videos how I'll explain stuff beforehand and things like that sometimes I wing it I know it's a little bablish and I hope this video doesn't turn out that way but I'll try to explain everything as well as I can so I'm imagining you're sitting here with me I'm trying to draw this out to you okay so let me just say this is your scope of main this is your main right here okay and this is this is actually how it is kind of I'm just trying to visualize it for you this is global global scope now global is, is a scary word don't worry about it global just means that you can access something globally everywhere so just imagine this being like stacks okay these are stacked onto each other global is a big box main is within it and this is a barrier this is a barrier of the gods okay the seventh god and this is something that lets stuff in but doesn't let stuff out okay so remember barrier that does let does let stuff in does not let stuff out just remember that while i'm visualizing this so global within it is main now anything written in here int variable something some type of variable in global in the global scope can penetrate this barrier of main and anything that is within main but it cannot go out so global can't go into another file here okay imagine there is a global scope in each file each file you're creating a class or something like that that's it, its own global scope the most outer scope that you can be in it can't penetrate that often there are ways to make it do that but still just think about that uh, and if I create something in main int I can call it the same thing uh, no I can't I'm sorry where to because main can access this variable that's why I can't name it the same thing um, but this main here this scope here is doesn't let stuff out so in the global scope I cannot access variable 2 so I outside in the global scope here I can't access this variable okay just like I can't access it out here or out here anywhere here any point in the global scope I can't access it because this is also important as soon as a scope ends now remember we're going from the we're going like this left and we're going how the hell do you do a down arrow like this this is the order we're going okay that's how it works in program we go left and down left like this boom 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 now at the end of every scope everything that is in here is gone no matter what it is that's how you get memory leaks when you have pointers pointing to dynamic memory those pointers go away as well at the end of a scope at the end of your program global scope basically here is the end of your program okay end of your file sorry this is the end of your file this is the end of your program so anything that reaches the end of main is gone because that's where your program ends and the global scope any functions down here can't access this variable but everything in main can access this variable. Now let me make a for loop or an if statement scope here. Now this is an if statement. Uh, let me just move that uh, to here. This is every statement, every if statement with these, these bracket thingies, that creates a scope. Okay, that creates a scope. So main has its brackets, every function has its brackets, anything that has its brackets. It could be a function in here, in the global, that function has a variable called uh, int local. Now just imagine there's an int variable in here. Anyway, in this function here, in the global scope, but it's destroyed as soon as it reaches the end of this scope and it can't be accessed from outside. Anyway, this has its own scope and it's local to this scope. So you need to just remember that. But that would be able to access this variable, but not this variable. Anyway, this is a if statement, if statement, and it has a variable in itself, var3, anything. It can't be accessed outside, here, anywhere, anywhere, but it can access this main variable. It can penetrate through, can't penetrate out. 
Okay, so I, I hope you're seeing wh where this is going. If the if statement has an if statement in it, the same rule applies. If that has a for loop in it, the same rule applies. This variable, this main can have a for loop here. It can have several scopes like this. They can't access anything outside of themselves, but they can access everything that is in main. And I hope you see that. Now, if you just think of this barrier, you'll understand it. Whew, I can feel myself talking too much, but that's a that's an image you can think about. So let me just show you that in practice. Let's make a global scope. So these are the variables. So let's make an integer global int one equals ten. Okay, and global int ten is accessible throughout this file in any anything. So these things create a scope. Okay, so this is the this is the main scope it's a function right so these things create a scope now this can access global int 1 see how I can access that I can find it here it's 20 I can change it and if I make an if statement here if global int 1 equals 20 then I can access I can change it to global int 1 equals 30 see how I can access it through every scope downwards but if I write, if I create a variable in the main scope, int main int uh, one equals 100, I can't access it here. Main int, I can't see it. See, I can't see it. Main int one, I can't find it. Uh, I can't access it out here. Main int one equals 20. That doesn't work. Main int one does not exist, and but I can access it in here. I can say main int one equals two hundred in here, right? And I can access it anywhere in main and any scope that is going downwards. And if I create another if statement, if main int one equals two hundred, then create a const int um, if int 1 equals uh, 300 so let me just do that now this integer in this if statement this scope as you can see will be destroyed right here it can't be accessed outside if int 1 doesn't exist it doesn't exist outside anywhere and I can't I can only access it in here look if int 1 see because this barrier this scope right here it hinders this from ever existing outside and anything in here doesn't exist outside and this exists in the most outer scope and this only exists within the main see how it goes inwards but not outwards so that is a scope when anyone talks to you about scope just think of the barrier that lets stuff in doesn't let stuff out that's it that's all you need to know so this is these are local variables to this if statement and it's not gonna work if I create a function out here function or void func test something whatever like this and I create a const int lil in here 20 now you're you're thinking this is obviously gonna exist out here but you're not thinking correctly you need to think that this scope that the function creates does not let this to go outside of the function so this only exists within the function anything that you change in here will only exist within the function or create in here will only exist in here but but since we have a global variable on top of this function before this function is declared or created you can access it in here global int 1 equals 20 so anytime I access this function it's gonna change global int into 20 so if I would were to actually create this global integer after this declaration in here remember the left and down or right and down right and down right and down remember up here this function doesn't know about global int or it does actually wait it does I'm sorry I'm dumb I'm dumb it does okay sorry about that anyway because the global scope will have created it we'll be able to go back here never mind I'm dumb sorry about that I'm trying to teach you wrong stuff here which I probably often do but uh, I'll do my best anyway that's good that that's something good we need to fail to learn why do we fall to stand back up all right so you get you learned something new today so that I there you go so global scope you can find stuff you can do stuff 
this function will be able to access this, but lil is not accessible out here. There is nothing called lil. That means that we can make a const int lil out here, a duplicate, and it will not complain because it is so sure that this variable will not exist outside of this scope. So that's also a good point to note, is that if you have something in the outside scope, I can't create another one, int global int one. See, I can't, I can't do that. It should complain. Uh, did I call it the same thing? There we go. I, it should complain now. Pretty sure. Or did I just learn something new? Did I just learn something new? Okay, that's weird. I'll have to check that out. You should not be able to create two of these, but it can see this is the local global end and it can probably differentiate between it anytime I call global int in here it's gonna take this local one instead of this one so that's a good point that's another topic that we need to talk about actually that's another topic we need to talk about if I if I create a const int a local variable here global int one a parameter and I say global int 1 here equals 20 this is a very good point actually that we came across because this is this, I'm gonna end the video with this um, or not const uh, let's see int okay so this is the local variable this is closer to this scope than this is so whenever you call this name it will call the local one the the one local and closest to its scope this one is further away because it's in a scope higher than this. This is in the same scope. So anytime I call it with the same name, it will use the closest one to it. The same thing happens here. If I create an int global int one here, 50, this global int is closer within the scope than the global one is, the actual one, the one outside. So any change will be to this one and not the one outside. If I remove this, any change will be to this one. So just remember that when you're working, that you can create local variables with the same name. I had forgotten this, but now I remember. Uh, when you create variables with the same name, and then you have to expect the, like for example here, the computer to change and use the one that's closest to it. So if I remove this from the function and write global int equals something, it will change this one, the outest one, the one that exists. But if there's something closer, it will take that and use that instead. Um, so just remember that and you should be fine. So that's a little tutorial on scopes and I hope I explained that well. Remember the impenetrable barrier thingy and that it will choose the variable closest to it if it has the same name as something outside. Those are the rules. That's the world we live in. That's how it is. Keep learning. Best of luck with everything. I hope this taught you something and showed you something and uh, keep training and i'll see you guys and girls in the next one right bye bye